Hello again, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Hall County Sports Television. I'm your host, Gary Glenn. We start off the show this week with state tournament basketball. Those games got underway last week, although with some rearranged schedules as they had to play around the ice storm that battered northeast Georgia. In 5A, Gainesville's girls popped Kell 54-34 on the road. Shakai Brown had 13 and Kayla Kelly 11. And in the second round for the Lady Elephants, it was a nail-biter. But in the end, they won on a last-ditch shot after a long road trip to Greenbrier. In the lane, Taylor Hawks took a pass from Brown, put the ball in the bucket. That led to a 47-45 win. Brown led the Lady Elephants with 13. Hawks scored only five, but that last two-pointer was mighty big. Gainesville's boys, meanwhile, who did not have a good region tournament, they went into the state tournament as a four seed, went on the road, and they knocked off a number one seed, North Atlanta 56-54, in overtime. DeMarcus Simons had 33 for the Elephants, including the buzzer beater, which led to the OT win. But I guess you can just play so many overtime games before they catch up with you, and that happened to the Elephants in the state round of 16. Jones County sent Gainesville home 65-64 in OT, despite a season-high 41 points from Simons. The male Elephants wind up this season at 25-5. and five. Heartbreaker for the Flowery Branch girls as well as they lost to Sequoia 62-60 on a rebound put back at the buzzer. Brandon Locke scored 13 and Kara Knight 10 for the Branch ladies who will end the year at 21-6. In Class 4A, region champion Johnson's boys stayed unbeaten with a 72-44 drubbing of Southeast Whitfield. Ty Cockfield scored 31. And then the Knights got 33 from Cockfield and 24 from Rod English, who'd played in that game after rolling his ankle in the win over Southeast. It was the round two win for the Knights, 75-60 over West Lawrence. We bring to the show now Coach Jeff Steele, head coach of the Johnson boys. And Jeff, first of all, congratulations for making it. It's the first time I think your team, a team coached by you, has been to the this round, yeah. round the Elite Eight. We are very pleased to uh, get to the third round. Uh, we played a quality opponent in West Lawrence the other night and we're able to, to finish them off and now we're heading for the big dog, Jonesboro, on Wednesday. So it's going to be quite an event. I think one of the things that has to have pleased you, well obviously to be undefeated at, at this stage of the game, we'll talk a little bit more about that in a minute, but, but the amount of support that you have received from the school and the community has really been something. But this has kind of been building over the last couple of years, but now here you are in the Elite Eight. Yeah, it was incredible the other night. The atmosphere, the way the community's rallied around our kids uh, has been spectacular. Has it sunk in? I mean, that you're undefeated at this stage of the game and 29 and 0 and all that. I mean, when you start, you know, I mean, the object, of course, is, is to win them all. But uh, quite frankly, most people don't expect to win them right. all, but here you are. Yeah, it's surreal. Uh, I haven't really been able to, to sit back and enjoy that yet. I'm still in the midst of the journey. So when it's all said and done, I'm sure I'll have time to reflect with a lot of uh, pleasant memories for sure. I'm sure that you're starting to see people pay attention to you now. I mean, now they know who you are. And you're probably starting to get a lot of junk defenses and all that kind of stuff. And, and the kids have to be prepared for that sort of stuff, don't they, huh? Yeah, we've seen that all year, though. Um, some, they're always trying to do something to Rod and Ty. And so in, in that sense, um, we're, we're used to that. We're just not used to it happening with such good athletes. Uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the strategic part of it is going to be the same. We're just going to have to you know, stay focused. When they do stuff like that, we have to trust each other. We have to make the right plays, make the right decisions, um, and, and, and we'll be fine if we can do that. One thing that I thought had to be encouraging to you in the games that I have seen you play, and I've seen you play a pretty good bit mm -hmm. this year, and we've been doing some things on the radio and so on, uh, the fact that you're starting to get some things off the bench, mm -hmm. some contributions. I'm, I'm talking about Garcia comes in there and Sims comes in there, and, right. and not, they're not just giving you ball handling. They're giving you some points every now yeah, and then. Yeah, it's been really impressive how – how the what you know the quote unquote role players have how much they've provided for us they are uh, getting more confident with every every second they're out there and that's that's what you want this time of year we need to be peaking you know we, no, we don't need to be going backwards at this point so yeah everybody's doing a great job 
all the way down to the managers. I mean, every, everybody, everybody, everybody's doing a, a fine job. Everybody's focused. Everybody's trying to stay the course, and we're just trying to, you know, take them one in a guy, one one game at a time, like we have all year. And it's been a, a, the thing that you've said that, that has been the key to this team. And and uh, it's obvious you got to have good athletes to play this deep in the playoffs. But it's the atmosphere that you've had. You said I remember one time after an interview. I remember it was after Lanier Lamb. You said it's hard to beat family. And that's kind of the attitude these guys, they seem to have each other's back. They do. And that, that's, that's something that, in my opinion, has been the most important thing for us this year. The closeness of this group, the closeness of the coaching staff uh, is incredible. And it's so powerful. People don't understand how powerful that can be. Uh, it's astonishing as, as, as to how far that can take you when you have that kind of mindset. Especially when you're talking about a game, literally sometimes of inches or just a few points here and there. But that intangible thing that you're talking about there in a close contest just might be the edge you need. I think so. Uh, we've proven that time and time again this year. We've had our backs against the wall several times, and instead of pulling apart, we pull together even closer, which is exactly what you have to do to get through those times. Jeff Steele, appreciate you coming Thanks, in, brother. Thanks, man. Appreciate All right, you and, and good luck to the Knights, and come back and let us know how you're going to do. I'll be glad to. Thanks, Gary. Now, also just staying with 4A, the North Hall girls advanced round two of that tournament by beating Northwest Whitfield 66-55. Taylor Ann Kelly hit for 29, her career high for the Lady Trojans. Sadie Cleveland scored 16 points, and Kenzie Gillespie added 15. The North Hall boys fell to Cartersville in the first round. It was 56-33 the final. Harrison Harper scored 10 for the Trojans, who will end this season at 14-15 and 15 on the boys' side. But then the North Hall girls took it on the road to Kathleen, Georgia, down around Warner Robins to take on Veterans High, a team which came in at 28-1. and And in one of the gutsier efforts that I have ever seen, the Lady Trojans just flat took it to the Warhawks for most of the game. Those Warhawks had several girls, 5'10 or better, and the Lady Trojans played about as well as you can play and not win. They, in fact, led most of the game before foul trouble, some missed foul shots, and an on-court injury to Sarah Holyfield caught up with them, and North Hall lost by 3, 65-62. Kelly scored 14, Gillespie 12, Katie Sears 11, and Cleveland 10 for the Lady Trojans, who will end the season at 18-12. and 12. Chester T's girls shot rather poorly, and they exited after the first round, sidelined by Pickens, 42-37. Tyler Bennett led the Lady War Eagles with 15, and they'll finish at 16-13 and 13 on the season. Now, the AAA state tournament. East Hall arranged for a doubleheader in the first round for the number two-seeded Lady Vikings and the number one-seeded East Hall boys, and they both won. The girls knocked out Oconee County, 68-55, while the boys sidelined Jefferson, 53-34. Lady Vikings got balanced scoring, led by Jatasia Bailey with 20, Ashlyn Ellison with 13, Jenny Edwards with 12, and Carly Winters with 11 all in double figures. And Kevon Davenport led the East Hall boys with 24, 10 points coming on a season-high five dunks. Tristan Cooper had four of their five three-point shots and scored 13. In the second round, the Viking girls rolled on 71-53 at Peach County. Calamize hit five three-pointers and led East Hall with 20 points, and Bailey added 16. And the Viking boys kept on trucking as well over the Peach County boys at home, 95-62. The Vikings shot 13 three-point shots. Davenport had 31 points. Jack Gwen Hopkins scored 19. Tristan Cooper and Tristan Cooper and his brother Luke added 13 points apiece, mostly on three-point shots, as this has been East Hall's deepest run into the postseason since 2011. We bring to the show now Coach Joe Dix, who is the head coach of the East Hall Viking boys. And first of all, Joe, thanks for taking time out to come in. I know it's a busy week. Well, let's talk about your team, though. You are playing really well this time of year. I think I read somewhere, maybe it was quoted in the paper, but saying this is maybe one of the times that you can remember recent years where you have been peaking at the right time. Yeah, uh, I've kind of felt like we maybe peaked a little too early uh, the last couple of years, but uh, to this team has gotten better and better as the season's gone on and uh, uh, really, really playing well right now. Well, you knew you had Kevin Davenport coming back, and he was going to be the guy. But, I mean, and, and he continues to be. I mean, there's no question about that. Yeah. But it seems like now the rest of the team is sort of, for lack of a better term, caught up with him, and, and, and they are contributing not just minutes but points and stuff like that. Yes. Um, you know, one key was getting Tyler Brown back. Uh, we had lost him last year to a broken leg during the last football game. So him coming back healthy this year, and then John Quinn Hopkins and uh, – Tristan Cooper both growing up and having another year under their belt. They've started since they were freshmen. And I think Roderick Huey's improvement, too, has, has been key to what we're doing. So um, we've got a good, solid 
high level starting five and our bench has been has been really good lately. Yeah, well, you play a lot of people, and that's kind of key for you to have that bench coming in, being able not just to contribute minutes but significant minutes. Yeah, we we try to commit to doing that early in the year, and um, we maybe took some lumps, and maybe where we people say, why were you playing that guy or this guy? And the hope was that it would pay off toward the end of the year with some depth, and uh, it has. And also the schedule, Joe. People may be saying, oh, you're going to the last guy. I know it was a great time for the, the yeah. kids, but you're playing really good people. And, and you go this this tournament here, this tournament there, and you're playing really, really good people. But now at the end of the year, maybe, when it counts, those kind of things play some dividends. Uh, they do. Um, we have played a tough schedule. Uh, great Alaska uh, tournament. You know, great tournament down in uh, Mobile. Uh, you know, so we, we've, we've played some good folks. And, of course, you know, Gainesville is as good as anybody mm -hmm. that we would have played all year. And uh, you know, this, 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 this group has gotten – they've gotten the message and they're, they're, they're really playing well right now. What has pleased you the most about the team? Probably how they've shared the ball. Um, you know, we've had, we've had nine different guys scoring double figures in a game this year. Uh, we've had four guys scoring more than 20 points in a game. So – you know, we're getting those kind of numbers. Uh, we've had a lot of assists in several of our games, and uh, the guys have really committed to playing with each other. Well, you got the Cooper brothers now. You mentioned Tristan, but his little brother came in, and I saw got double figures a couple uh, games for you. He did. Uh, Luke's going to be a really good player for us. He's been contributing this year. He stretches the defense. Still looks like he ought to be in middle school, but <laughs> but he's he's got a great stroke, and uh, he shot the ball really well in our game against Peach County. He gave us a spark and really kind of got things going for us. Is there any one thing or two things you got to tweak here to, to, to take it to that even that next level that we're talking about? Y'all didn't need Elite Eight, but, you know, the, the, the goal is to win out now. Well, uh, you know, we're going to practice a few game situations, just talk about what happens if this, this, or this happens. So some, some game situational stuff. Uh, this time of the year you can't – you ain't going to be in there practicing two hours, three right. hours. You know, we're going to be out there an hour, hour, 15 minutes max. It's more mental and physical at this point in time. But we'll, we'll work on some game situations and some specific scouting report stuff. Yeah, if the hay's not in the barn by now, it's too late to go get right, it. Right, right. You know, it, right now it's about you got to know who this guy is. He's a shooter. Or this guy is a great rebounder, whatever. But whatever you, you've done for your team should be done already. Yeah. But you're deep, Joe, and that's got to give you some confidence. Even if you get one or two of the people in foul trouble, you got some people that can take up the slack. Uh, we we do, we do, and I, like I said, that's that's been a calling card for this team this year, and and, and it's, it's 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 saved us a couple of games as well. All right, Joe, thanks for coming in. We appreciate it. Good luck to the Vikings the rest of the way. Stay in touch, okay? All right, appreciate it. Appreciate it, Gary. Okay, North Georgia's Christians boys, North Georgia Christians boys, won their quarterfinal game at the state. GICAA tournament, 65-46 over Grace Christian Academy. Remember, we featured Coach David Roberts last week of the Chargers. Norris Rediger had 26 for the Chargers, while Chris Palmer scored 14 and Justin Law 11 for North Georgia Christian. And we hope to have more on them next week. Hail to the champions. That story when Hall County Sports continues. Your one-stop spot for complete auto repair is the Auto Works shop on Sprout Springs Road. On everything from oil changes to brakes, new and used tires and tune-ups, even the big jobs like transmissions. The specialists at the Auto Works can have you up and running just like that. You talk about value, the Auto Works will not be undersold on used tires or any locally priced repair job. Ask about special discounts for students and teachers with your ID. That's the Auto Works at 6671 Spout Springs Road, just past Flowery Branch High and Spout Springs Elementary Schools. Phone 770 967 1732. We're back. I'm Gary Glenn, Hall County Sports. More on the recent state swimming meet at Georgia Tech. As we told you last week, gold came back to Hall County as Ty Powers of North Hall and Colin Monahan of Gainesville both won state swimming titles. Monahan, in fact, set a new state record of 55.03 seconds in defending his 100-yard breaststroke title while also finishing as a runner-up with a silver in the 200 individual medley in 149.1, both of those times earning him automatic All-American status. Powers also got in on the All-American honors as he repeated his 50-yard freestyle championship. This time it was 20.47, and he was a runner-up in the 100 free in 45.22, an All-American time and only one-tenth of a second behind the winner. Well, next up for Ty, he'll be swimming at Tennessee after high school, while Colin Monahan will be heading on to Georgia to be a water dog. And earlier in the week, I dropped by Gainesville High to talk to Colin about defending that title and going on to swim for Georgia. All right, Colin, tell me, how tough is it? 
to defend the state championship when they're knowing going in, you know, that you've got some things that you got to do. And the pressure's kind of on. It's a, it's a lot of pressure when it comes down to finals and, you know, you're walking out there with everyone and all your competition and you got guys that, you know, could potentially come out and swim best races against you and they beat you. Uh, so it's, it's a lot of pressure when it comes to it and um, just you got to learn how to deal with it. Yeah, and I've learned how to deal with it over the past years of my racing career. Is that one of the things that that this kind of competition teaches you is how to deal with that sort of pressure? Mm-hmm. Not not just in athletic competition, but in every aspect of the life that you that you have to live. Mm-hmm. Definitely, I, I've just through swimming, I've had so much uh, life lessons, and uh, you know, training myself to deal with situations, and uh, no matter like how they turn out, you got to look for the best of it, and uh, you know, having the right mindset well you got a gold and you got a silver so that was you know you, you deal with it for the fact that every now and then that something happens and you finish second uh, exactly exactly you know and you just gotta be happy that you were in that position and had a fun race at the same time so mm-hmm. that's the best part what's the best part about being state champion i mean that's something nobody ever takes away from you right <laughs> yeah i mean the best part is probably the fact that i'm a senior and uh you know i got to go out like that and with a state record and everything so that had to be the best part, just ending my high school career like that. So now you're going to swim at the University of Georgia. Yes, sir. Looking forward to that? Definitely, yeah. They actually just had SECs last weekend, and that's something that I'm looking forward to next next year, like, so bad. I can't wait to get there and, and train and uh, be with a, group, a team like that because I come from a small team of just, like, three guys. And to go to a team full of 30 guys and uh, be with everyone and train hard. Take you to kind of the next level in a lot of different ways, right? In so many ways, so many ways. Now you got your training partner Ty Powers at North Hall. He won a state championship too, but now he's going to swim for Tennessee, and you're going to swim for Georgia. So you're still going to be competing against one another, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah, we'll have dual meets against each other, and we'll have SECs and maybe even NCAA's, depending upon when we make nationals. So that'll be a fun time. What are you going to be swimming in college? Did they tell you? They haven't told me yet. Uh, I think I'm going to be in a lot of different events uh, just to figure out what I'm best at. Probably right now I'm definitely in the breaststrokes and then the IMs and maybe some backstroke or freestyle. You know, I, I've asked other guys this that have done this for a long time in, in sports, individual sports like, like wrestling and swimming and things like that. Is it still fun for you? Yeah, so much fun. I, st- I can't. It never gets old. Uh, you know, a lot of people tend to burn out and say that they don't enjoy it anymore and that's just not me. I just, uh, whenever I get in the water, it's something else. You need any aspirations at swimming, even beyond maybe somewhere in international competition? Maybe. We'll just see how college goes. And, uh, you know, if I excel a lot, then, you know, maybe I'll try and make a PAMPAC team or uh, some international. Uh, just kind of play by ear, huh? Uh-huh. Yeah, just try and see what happens. Good luck at Georgia College. Thank you. Now, those of you that saw the show last week will recall that we had Ty Powers on in a real brief little clip to talk about signing with Tennessee. Now, we'd also hope to have Ty on this show as well, but found out he was recovering at home after ear surgery. Well, get well wishes heading out to him, and maybe we'll get him back here on the show soon. We get back on the mat when we come back. Gary Glenn back on the set of Hall County Sports Television along with Rob Bruce, who is the pastor at McKelvey Road United Methodist Church. And Rob, into a series on prayer now. Yeah, that's right, Gary. We will be in a series on prayer up until Palm Sunday. We'll be talking about how you can rest assured that God hears your prayer, how I should pray, what can I pray for, those type of things. All right, sounds like an interesting topic. Look forward to hearing it, Rob. Thank you. Thank you, Gary. 
Hall County Sports is also brought to you in part by Green Ford on Browns Bridge Road in Gainesville. Check out the latest deals and remember when you go green, go Green Ford. By Turner Wood and Smith, serving the insurance needs of our area for over 100 years. And by McKeever Road United Methodist Church on McKeever Road in Oakwood. Loving Christ, loving people, and helping people love Christ. We're back. I'm Gary Glenn. This is Hall County Sports Wrestling, this particular segment. Now, at the State Wrestling Championships in Macon, West Hall's Elliott Rayford claimed the Class AAA 160-pound classification with a 9-1 victory over Spencer's Joshua Sampson. Vindication for Elliott after he finished second last season. Now, his state tournament, well, well, it was just not as hard as maybe some had because he won two matches by pins. Then he had a 7-1 victory, and then he had a 9-1 win for the title. And Elliott dropped by the studio earlier this week. We bring to the show now Elliot Rayford, who has, as we said, won the state championship at 160 pounds. And Elliot, thanks for taking time out to be with me. I know you're a busy guy. Yes, sir. You, now, before we turn the cameras on, you talked about the the dual enrollment that you're that you're doing at West Hall and the Gainesville campus at North Georgia College and State University. Uh, when did you know you were going to do that? Uh, we'll talk about athletics in a minute, but that's, that's academic stuff. When did you know that you were going to do that? When was that made available to you? Um, well, going into my senior year, I didn't have that many more classes I needed to take to graduate from high school. So I just figured I'd go ahead and start on my college classes to, you know, kind of start chipping away at that first semester and get some hours out of the way. So, like, last semester I took two classes, and this semester I'm taking two classes. So what are you taking? Uh, last semester I took math and English, and now I'm taking history and psychology. Cool. All right, let's go back to athletics now. Let's go back to wrestling. Uh, you finished as a runner-up last year in the, in the state tournament. Yes, How much motivation was that for you to win it all this year? Um, it's definitely a big motivator. It's sitting in the back of your mind every practice, every workout, every lift. You know, you just that motivation. You don't want to have that feeling again, you know, that knot in your stomach, you know, that taste of defeat. You, uh, you know, it's just something you don't want to experience again. So it's just something you use to push you even harder. You know, I think wrestlers, are, I'm kind of this way. I, I think I hate to lose more than I like to win. Definitely. That, that, you find that to be, be true? Yes, sir. Uh, you've only lost once this season, your senior year, and that was to a guy in North Carolina in the finals of a tournament. Uh, sometimes even that, though, you know, a perfect season is great. Everybody wants to win them all. That's, there's no question about that. But sometimes when you get that, you say, you know, if I don't really work at this, this is what can happen to me, right? Uh, it's definitely a reminder. Yeah, I, I didn't you know, become lazy in the middle of the season, and that happened. It's just lined up with a guy that, you know, in my mind I should have beat, but, you know, stuff played out as it did, and, you know, what happened happened. So, I mean, it's definitely a kind of an extra motivator in the middle of the season. Just keep working. Uh, sometimes, you know, you give it your best shot, and it just ain't your day. I think that's what wrestling teaches you. Definitely, yes, sir. You just got to try your best, and whatever happens, happens. Yeah, give it that way. All right, now, what you got going on now? Now, are you getting ready for the Greco-Roman season? Uh, freestyle and Greco is coming up in April, but before then, uh, the end of March, I'm going to a tournament in Virginia Beach. It's called uh, Senior Nationals. So they kind of they split it up by age group. So it's freshman, national, sophomore, you know. Mm -hmm. So I'm in the senior division. So that's uh, at Virginia Beach in the end of March. Mm. Is, this, is this folk style wrestling? Yes, sir. Uh, what people see in high school wrestling. Um, and now looking forward to going to Appalachian State. Uh, Tell me about that. Definitely excited for that. It's fun to get in a new room with uh, new training partners, new coaches different perspectives, talk to them, find out their mindset, you know, different technique they can offer to you to, you know, kind of change your wrestling and, you know, change this little piece of it that'll just help you become a better wrestler. And wrestling at the next level is always fun. Well, this has been kind of our state championship show, and I've also asked some of our other state champions this. You, you have to do this at such a high level for so long, you know, it, it sometimes can turn into a grind. Right. Uh, is it still fun? Oh, it's always fun. You wouldn't do it if it wasn't fun. I mean, you know, there's parts of it that you might question yourself, why am I putting myself through this? But you just got to keep your head down, you know, put your nose to the grindstone and keep going. You know, you got a goal in mind. That's what you're working for. So you're not just going to, you know, stop in the middle of a rep, stop in the middle of practice, you know, is this really worth it or not? Because, I mean, you wouldn't do it if it wasn't worth it. So you just keep working. Mm. What have you learned from wrestling besides how to wrestle? Um, a lot of life lessons just – work hard in everything you do. You can't do anything halfway. Um, I just always try and be better than the guy sitting next to me. So if we're sitting in class and we're doing math, I'm trying to learn more than he's trying to. Trying to. And, uh, you know, if I get our test back and he made better than me, then, you know, I do more homework. I study harder because I want to do better than him. Mm. So it always just 
I'm a pretty competitive person, so I always yeah. want to do better than everybody. Just the life lessons, never give up, never stop trying, just pick yourself back up, keep going. I'm with you there, son. Uh, you know, in my weightlifting, I've gone to places in the world I never thought I'd ever go. And, and I think that's happened to you in the wrestling, right? Yes, sir. I've been to the Ukraine uh, two summers in a row. And maybe hope to do some more international stuff? Yes, That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't yeah, it? It's always fun. Uh, they tell me that at the next level, whatever it is, you know, from high school to college, college to the pros, it's the speed and everybody's pretty good. You ready for that? Yes, sir. That, uh, in college, is never an easy match. It's always close. I mean, yeah, you get those standout guys that can kind of blow guys out of the water, but, you know, they don't get there just overnight. you got to work, you know, multiple years just at a high level, just always working, trying to get better. Plus, you got a little bit of a jump now. You can transfer these credits over to Appalachian State, right? Yes, sir. So, that would probably give me a little bit more free time. I can train some more and uh, give me a leg up on a couple guys, but I just always work hard on everybody. You expect to crack the starting lineup right away? That's the plan, unless Coach tries to redshirt me my freshman year. Okay. Well, good luck to you. you. Appreciate it, Elliot Rayford. Thank you for coming in, son. Good luck to you the rest of the way. Thank you. Now, the state wrestling tournament was also sweet for North Hall's Michael Carew at 145 pounds. After Michael was a runner-up last season, he also won a tough match, 6-3 over Gilmer's William Gudger, to claim that championship in Class 4A. And I went by North Hall earlier this week to grab a word with Carew, who is just a junior this year. Okay, Michael, you've had a chance to kind of think about being the state champion for a while. Has it sort of sunk in? Yes, yes, sir, it has. It's a, it's a great feeling. Tell me, take me kind of through the wrestling of the state tournament there. What kind of tournament did you have when you came in? Okay, well, I had um, uh, my first guy. I, I'm not sure what team he was from, but I pinned my first guy. My second kid was from Troop County. I think that's what they're, that's the name of the team. Uh, I pinned him in the second period. And my, my semifinals match, we had three guys in the semis. Me, uh, actually, yeah, me. Isaiah, Darian, and I, th I think that was, yeah, just three. And uh, well, my guy in the semifinals, I beat him 8-1. So, yeah, it was pretty successful. And then I had my Gilmer guy. I've never wrestled before, and I had him in the finals. I beat him 6-3. Yeah, well, you know, catching the guy from Gilmer, you knew he was going to be pretty good in the finals. Yeah. How did you get yourself prepared for the tournament? Um, Other than that, obviously the physical condition and mentally though it's it's something, isn't it? Huh? Yeah, it's a. Uh, I kind of I did it a lot different than last year when I made the state finals. Uh, I think being in an arena and making it a three day tournament makes it a lot different than last year when we had snow and we just had it in a one day in a high school. It's a lot different. So I kind of had to. I just had to take it one match at a time. You don't excite yourself too much that you're. Like you're advancing to the next round, just you gotta take one match at a time. That's what I did, and um, so I didn't surprise myself until, of course, like I, I it was I was shocked after I won the state finals. I I was in shock for about ten minutes afterwards. I couldn't I couldn't talk. <laughs> but, well, because it's been something you've been working for for so long, and when you finally realize it, 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 it kind of all hits you, huh? Yes, it does. It's a uh, a lot of hard work it comes down to one match. Well, now, though, the pressure is going to be on, right? Yeah. <laughs> if you've done it once, you got to do it yeah, again. Yeah, i got to do it again. i got to repeat it. What are you doing now? Um, right now, I'm just uh, I'm working out in the morning with my buddies, and we're starting Freestyle and Greco up here pretty soon, so start up with that. And i got nationals in about a, in about a um, month. So. so it just doesn't end, huh? No, no, sir. And is it still fun for you? Yes, it is. When I came into high school, it, it was a lot of pressure on myself. Because I was looked at as, as like the freshman that, I mean, everyone everyone knew who I was. So I mean, I, I felt like I had to, like, I had I had to do good, and I, so it kind of took the fun out of it. And I also was cutting a lot of weight. So this past this year, I haven't been cutting as much weight, and I've just been enjoying myself. And so yeah, it has gotten a lot more fun. And ready to do it again. Yes, sir. And once again, good luck to both of those young men, Elliot Rayford and Michael Carew, in their wrestling pursuits. Just a couple of quick notes to close. Some good news from college football. Gainesville graduate Deshaun Watson, now at Clemson, of course, appears to be doing well after his knee surgery. He plans on being ready, he says, for full workouts by June or July. And remind you once again that that 5K race at Lanier Tech coming up this Saturday, February 28th, this will benefit the General Scholarship Fund. The race will start at 8.30. That's our show for this week. I'm Gary Glenn. Join us next week right here for more All-County Sports.